Are yeah. you ready? So we haven't done a Q and A in like forever. So I asked some people some questions. Well, I let them ask me some questions that we can answer. You gonna answer some questions? First question is, what's your favorite thing about your spouse? My favorite thing about my spouse is that you are really gentle and calm. Mm -hmm. It's kind of, kind of, it's really crazy how in all moments you really stay that way. I don't understand it. I'm still trying to figure that out. But, you know, that's a real skill. I applaud you. <laughs> yeah, I applaud you. And I really do appreciate it, too. <laughs> you know, I feel like I want to give the energy that I'll, you know. I'm hoping to receive back. So I want people to give me the same calmness. And so I think I lead with that because of that. Okay. Favorite thing about you has to be the fact that you're like extremely goal oriented. I would say like you dream really big and it's kind of aspirational. I don't know if there's like a different way that like we were raised that creates that kind of energy in you. But I feel like you have like five year goals, 10 year goals. Like you literally set yourself up for like these timelines. And I never, I never thought in timelines like growing up. So mm -hmm. I think it's, it's definitely inspiring to watch you dream about like things that you want to accomplish. Yeah, I think honestly that just comes from just life. Yeah. And just wanting to do things oh, in increments of times. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Okay. Do you want more children? You see how some fit and some don't? That is a no, people. No. We got our two. I can answer for both of us. If we have more kids, it would be adoption. We are good with our two. We got two boys. Can't be mad with that. Um, Yeah. That is... No. So, so short answer, no. We don't want more kids. <laughs> Did you want to elaborate anymore? No, I'm done. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm set with my two children. I feel good about that. I don't enjoy pregnancy. Um, so, yeah, you you wrap that up for us, and I appreciate it. Okay, okay, cool. cool. Ah, this is a good one. How are you guys mentally? I'm not like great but i'm not in a bad space i think oh, i'm just oh, finding good. my groove and trying to get back to a sense of normalcy like i'll never be the same person after having kids but i think i just want to get to a space where i feel like you know i'm breathing and not my head is under the water you know yeah. so i'm not like in a bad space but I'm getting better every day. Okay, that's good to know. Mm -hmm. I think mentally, I feel like I'm in a place of uh, growth. Mm -hmm. I think uh, I'm not the same witty I was when you first met. And I think that's just come with life. Everybody evolves. But I do think that mentally, I'm not that same person either. Mm -hmm. I was going through things, different challenges in life. But I think I'm in a good space now. I'm really happy. Got my boys, got my wife, got, you know, things established, setting up things. So I, I would say I'm pretty, I'm in a good space mentally. Okay. I would kind of agree with that. Like I, What's wrong, sir? Help. There you go. Good job. And I could tell that we had, like, grown. Physically, we look different. The way that like our conversations are, I think they're different in like a better way. Um, yeah. I, I, okay, okay. I noticed the growth. Real, we growing, we growing. Mm -hmm. So all this about evolving. How has it been being parents to two kids? No, it's a well, right now we got one kid because the other one is sleeping. So I say it's been a challenge. It's been challenging. And then we have like moments of harmony where mm -hmm. it's like things are going like extremely smooth and you're like, man, I could do this. Yeah. I think when it's going smooth, it's going smooth. And when it's going rocky, that boat is rocky. <laughs> but what makes it rocky? What do you feel like? 
what moments make it rocky? I think about the other day, literally. Like when it was two days ago when you went to Target. <laughs> Man, Ryan tried to send me through, send me over. It yeah. was just, you know, I think like that was, that moment is just really challenging as a parent. Cause it's like, what, what else do I do, bro? I'm patting you, I'm rocking you, I'm giving you all the things. None of that is helping you. You know what I mean? So I think that's the times when it gets really challenging when you think you're trying everything and yeah. it still don't work. But then the other parent tries something and it works and it's just like, what is happening here? Yeah. You know, so I think that's the most challenging part of it all. But being a parent of two, I think it's honestly pretty good. I think we know that they're not going to stay this little forever. So I think just like realizing that part of it all is, is really exciting because they won't be babies no more. So we ain't got to worry about like, you know, baby cries. They'll cry still once they get older, but not in this, in, not in this level. They'll be able to also communicate in words. Right. So I think like that's the most challenging part is like realizing that this state that they're currently in is not forever, mm -hmm. but also take advantage of it because they're about to be out the house back to back. So you know. Right. We win. We win. You know, eventually back to, we'll eventually win. we'll win. You know. <laughs> right so now it's, it's ghetto. It's a plus. It's a plus right now. I would say for me, being parents of two, it's been um, it's been eye-opening like I'm learning a lot about myself mm -hmm. more than like them like learning about how I deal with things under pressure learning about like how I'm good with like kind of being flexible in life like I'm really being challenged every day to kind of like step it up a little bit so every day is a new process yeah and it's kind of like nothing is the same every day. Like there's always something that's different. I mean, that's why I like I do like being an educator because no day the same. Yeah. You can expect that every day gonna be different. It's kind of crazy, but no day is the same. I do enjoy watching them form a relationship too. Yeah. Like you can tell that Rise is watching everything that Rain does mm -hmm. and. Rain just wants to be in his business. Yes. I feel like we got to answer this question so that way it, it, it ties back into the show, right? It says, do you keep up with any of the castmates from our show? I um, told them that I wasn't answering any questions. They didn't have anything to do with us. Well, there goes that. <laughs> because, like, I wanted to just talk about things that we could actually talk about. Okay. Not, like speculate on what other people is doing in their lives. And that was that. Are you guys staying in New Orleans? I'll let you answer that. Huh. Rain, come here. So just to be honest <laughs> and frank, right? I'm born and raised here. I had the opportunity to live in different states. Uh, Amani is also not from here. Um, she is from Chicago by way of uh, California. Uh, I am from New Orleans, but I lived in Atlanta, lived in Texas. So New Orleans is home base, but I cannot say that this is forever base. Um, there is a lot of things that happens in the city that you just can't, can't, you can't knock. Um, and that's from a educational standpoint. That's from a financial standpoint. That's just from an environment standpoint. I think. I love New Orleans, but I don't really know that this is where I would want to say I would stay for the rest of my life. So to answer that question, um, probably not. But as of right now, we're here. I mean, obviously I'm a team player, so wherever the group wants to go, I'm here for that. Um, I've always seen myself living in multiple places, so I'm definitely open to moving. I do feel like I've built a sense of community here just because I didn't have family here. So I have a lot of friends that I consider family. So I'm going to miss them when we leave. But obviously, I'm able to keep relationships going even if we leave. So I'm down for it. We just need to figure out where we are going. That's next. Where? So I think this is a good question for me. How did I come up with the nickname Sweets? 
Do y'all do y'all know her? Have y'all seen her? Not the lemon heads. <laughs> That's still sweet. <laughs> tap in to the lemon heads. Like if you're not subscribed to her page on the lemon heads, make sure you <laughs> tap in on the lemon heads. <laughs> Help, please. When a lemon head pop out, just know she ain't sweet no more. She's a little uh, unsweet. <laughs> nah, but I came with the nickname Sweets. I didn't know her really. Um, Not even really. You didn't know I didn't know her at, at all. all. I just heard her voice and she seemed really, really sweet. So as me and my headspace, I give literally everybody a nickname. I don't know. I just think... Once you become an attachment to me, I give you a nickname. It's kind of like my thing. I don't know. I don't know if that's just like love or whatever that may be. But I give everybody a nickname. If I don't really give you a nickname, I really haven't pretty much thought too depth into you. But she had a really sweet voice. She had really, really soft hands. Um, and she also seemed like a sweet person just from the outer appearance. So I nicknamed, I gave her the nickname Sweets. And from there, it just stuck. I asked, could I call her that? She said yes. And then it just literally ran with it. And then, like, later on, moving on in life, she is, I found out that she really is a sweet person. So it kind of really went with it. Yeah. So you peeped the energy early and was like, I peeped the energy early, you, you know. You literally walked, let me tell you, when, do you remember when? It was like we hadn't even started conversing yet. Like, we literally just walked out the door, and then you was like, I, can I Well, you sweet? Sweets? Yeah. I was like, sure. Yeah, because you seem sweet. What's something you learned about each other post-Mavs that surprised you about them? Learning about you after Mavs was that you never had a job. <laughs> <laughs> like, because I literally have had a job since I was 16. Like, as soon as I turned 16, I got my first job, and I've never stopped working since then. So to hear someone else, like, went through their entire life until they became an adult, and that was their first job, it was just, like... Privilege. Very privileged. <laughs> and I just had never... I had never met anybody. Well, I'm sure I've met people like that, but not, like, black people or, like, black people from inner city. Like, you know... I ain't never met nobody that's never had a job. That's why my first question was like, well, how did you do stuff? Because like, I had to get a job so that I could go to the movies and buy the clothes I wanted or pay for school. Like, I literally needed it. It was out of necessity versus, mm -hmm. I mean, I also wanted a job so I could get out of the house. I was always babysitting my siblings. That was like my out. Like, I got to go to work. <laughs> so... To know that somebody didn't have to have a job, that was so surprising to me. And it's like, how did you learn work ethic? And it also makes a lot of sense as to like why you be like over people. You're not great with like customer service because you never had like a customer service, service job. job. You never had to work. That wasn't my know? box. And your patience is so low when we're at places like that because you don't understand like the the plight of the the, the worker, you know? <laughs> I don't think it was for me. You know, I don't think that that part of life was for me. I think everybody has to, in their life, they should work customer service. Yeah. It helps you have some empathy for people. I work in customer service right now. You do not. <laughs> I the have customer the, is not always right where you work. And the customer is absolutely not right where That's I work. That's what I'm saying. That's not a customer service job. Customer service is servicing the customer. Y'all do not service the customer. We do. No, y'all don't. Mm -hmm. Who's your customer? The students. And they don't get what they want. Let them tell it they're right. They don't get what they want, though. Yes, they do. Mm. Well, that's an argument for another day. It's a whole other argument for another day. Okay, what surprised you about me? I would say that the thing that I'm thinking mostly is that you do really have an unsweet side. Okay. Um... I don't think that I was that. Pr I didn't see it on Mavs. I didn't get to the unsweet money. Mm -hmm. uh, I only got sweet money. And I think once I did started to see like, oh, you you mad money. I think that was a, a difference because I think you need that in in relationships just so you can know how to like go through things yeah. and you know understand the different levels and the different changes. But I think that was one thing I definitely had to learn post Mavs mm -hmm. of how do you have a conversation. Because me, I know I'm a 
a little raw sometimes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you are not raw. Even yeah. even mad, you're not really raw. It's just real, like, stern or somewhat, mm -hmm. you know? So I think learning and navigating that was one of the things I learned definitely post-mass. And I'm still learning. I think I was about to say, I think you're still learning that because I feel like recently you were like, well, you get irritated too. And I was like, I never said I don't. I think it's about, like, we handle the irritation differently. Mm -hmm. So I think it comes off as though I'm not ever mad or I'm not ever irritated by something. But I get mad. It's just I don't respond in the same ways that you do to yeah. the anger or to the, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. We can do this as, like, two people. How do you manage mommy and me time separately for both children? Come here, bud. I get to be active with my guy most of the day because he's active, you know? Mm -hmm. Rye, I just, you know, I spend my quality time mostly with just holding him and reading him a book every now and then, giving him a bath on my bath days. Um, and I would say that's really it. I don't think I'm getting a lot of, lot of I don't think I'm getting as much bonding time with Rye just yet just because he is so new. Mm -hmm. But I do know that I can't take that personally because he in that phase of growing right yeah. now. So I know that you're gonna get a lot more bonding time with him just based off of feeding. So mm -hmm. I would say the way that we manage it though is like like we take turns with the kids. Mm, yeah. So like um, like if you're taking rain outside, then I'm with Rye and mm -hmm. you're playing with him. Or like with bath time, yes. With like bath time, we switch off. Um, like you'll bathe Rye or like put Rye in his pajamas and then I'm doing rain that night. Mm -hmm. So I think we just make sure that we're kind of like tag teaming in that sense. Um, taking each other, taking them out separately so that they have their moments with us. Mm -hmm. I think Rye is waking up now. Um, how are we balancing married life with two kids? I think that's a good question. I think we are really trying to figure that out currently right now. Mm -hmm. I think we had got into a groove when we had just had the one, and then we found out that we was having the two. So I think now it's just relearning it all over again, I'm trying to figure out how, you know, how do we find us within two kids. Um, so I think that's honestly an everyday thing to do. Yeah, I don't think we've mastered it yet. But I do know we started to set intentional time. Like this month, we have a calendar of different things to do to build intimacy in our marriage. So I think that's pretty, you know, that's pretty dope. I think just finding different things to do each month could be a different connection point. So I think we're trying it. I don't think we've mastered it yet, but yeah. you know, it's worth a shot. And then we've also like been talking about getting into couples therapy mm -hmm. to kind of strengthen our marriage. I think that's going to be helpful to kind of take us to the next level. We've also been, like, talking about doing more date nights and stuff. We did an in-home date night for our anniversary. So I think that's a way that, you know, like, if we don't have a sitter, we still are kind of, like, making time for each other. Rain, you have any questions for us? No. <laughs> Thanks for your questions. I really appreciate you guys taking the time to want to get to know our family. Yes, exactly. I think it also gave us a chance to kind of get to know each other a little bit more, too, by answering these questions. So yep. Keep the questions coming. We'll find ways to answer them in more organic time. It's kind of hard to sit and answer questions with these kids, but... We'll think of more thoughtful ways to include you guys in our day-to-day. -day. Yeah. What she said. <laughs>